Melanie Man family, you're back, I'm back, we're back. Thanks for joining me and continuing with me on the Furlough to Freedom series. Now this series follows my journey from working and being burnt out in corporate America to moving into a life of health, peace, and freedom. Don't you like how that sounds? Today, we're going to dive into how embracing minimalism became one of the keys to my early retirement journey and my life abroad adventure. So why don't you come along with me? Welcome to Melanin Man Travels. Your passport to freedom, fulfillment, and financial independence awaits you. We're breaking barriers, building legacies, one journey at a time. Are you ready to level up your life? and write your own global success story, let's go. I didn't introduce myself. I'm Kevin and this is Melanin Man Travels. Since you're watching this video, I have to assume that you're looking for something different. You wanna make some changes in your current life to create a better one? If this is the case, I'm about to challenge some of the things you thought you knew about what you need to live a fulfilling life. Before we get into minimalism, what do I mean by retirement? I have a unique and specific definition. You will need to ask yourself the same question. For me, retirement means I don't have to work for my current employer anymore. It means I don't have to work at the same level that I've been working at for years. It means I can choose to work again, if, when, where, and for how long. Retirement means freedom to choose. What is minimalism? It's not about living with nothing. It's about living with intention. It's about keeping what adds value to your life and getting rid of the rest of it. It's about rediscovering yourself and creating a new and improved you. Now, when it came to retiring early and moving abroad, minimalism wasn't just a helpful element, it was the game changer. So let me break it down for you. The average person spends years accumulating stuff thinking it'll make them happy. I did the same thing. A new car, a big house, more clothes, then a newer car, a bigger and fancier house, and more expensive clothes. But here is the truth bomb. Stuff doesn't make you any happier. It creates bills, stress, and a pair of golden handcuffs that keeps you chained to a job that you probably don't even like. By adopting a minimalist lifestyle, you're not just decluttering your space. You are decluttering your entire life, the physical and the mental. I'm going to talk about it in general and then how it specifically looks in my life. So here we go. One, you reduce expenses by reducing things. Less stuff means lower bills. No more storage units filled with stuff that you don't even use. You have less house that you have to heat and cool with cheaper rent or mortgage payment. You have fewer things that you need to insure and maintain, like a brand new luxury vehicle. Two, you increase your savings and investments. With lower expenses, you can supercharge your savings and your investing strategy and rate. Watch your investment portfolio grow for your early retirement. It'll increase a whole lot quicker than you think it would. Three, flexibility. Minimalism makes you nimble, not just moving abroad, but navigating your whole life becomes infinitely easier when you're not weighed down by a bunch of possessions. Four, 
clarity. Without the noise of constant consumption, you gain clarity on what truly matters to who? You. Get capitalism, consumerism, and the Joneses out of your ear. How do you get started? It all begins with questions. Start questioning everything. Do you really need that fancy car? Or that new car? Or could it be replaced by a reliable used car? Will that do the job? Does your house fit your needs? Or is it filled with a lot of unused space? Go through your possessions one by one and ask yourself, when was the last time I used this? Or does this thing really add value to my life? If it doesn't, I think you know what you need to do. Now, at the beginning of this video, I told you I was going to challenge some things. I'm going to challenge your time because yes, this will take work. I'm going to challenge some of the deeply held beliefs that you may have because many of us were conditioned to acquire and maintain stuff. So here's a funny example. One day, a friend popped over to my house. He went in the refrigerator to get something to drink and he noticed that it wasn't a lot of stuff in there. He came back and he asked me, hey, is everything okay? I'm like, dude, what do you mean? You don't have any food in your refrigerator. Now, there are a couple of things in there, you know, the staples. However, it was only the stuff that I needed. Enough for a few meals that I had planned to cook over the next couple of days. I had what I needed and what I wanted. We both were raised, a, let's say conditioned, that a full refrigerator means that you have some level of economic abundance or economic stability. And that may have been the case back in the day. But for me, it means that I will end up wasting food and throwing it away. And I know this from experience. I have nothing to prove to myself or anyone else by keeping my refrigerator full. And a side note, if you haven't already noticed, when you travel abroad, you will notice many times a home refrigerator is a lot smaller abroad than it is in the US. Go figure. As you shed the unnecessary stuff, you're gonna feel lighter and freer. You'll soon realize that it is the experiences that brings more joy, not the stuff. And this is where the magic of early retirement and moving abroad comes in. With minimalism, early retirement becomes more achievable because you simply need less to live on and to live with. Your expenses drop, your savings grow, and suddenly that early retirement age starts to look more feasible. Are you moving abroad? Would you rather an exciting adventure or a logistical nightmare? Imagine packing your whole new life into just a couple of suitcases instead of dragging a bunch of unnecessary stuff off to your dream destination. What if you didn't have to worry about a house full of furniture and belongings or to have to pay for international shipping. When you have less things to clutter up your space and your mind, you will find yourself living more in the present. You'll develop a greater appreciation for those experiences over your possessions. And you'll begin to connect with people and cultures in a way that you never could have imagined because you were so busy managing all your stuff. At least, that was my experience. So what did I do? I realized I didn't need my expensive condo and I learned that my money could be better invested somewhere else. Now, stop right there. I'm not saying run out and sell your home. 
What I am saying is you need to assess your situation and possibly make a new plan. I don't want to get ahead of myself because real estate is in a future video. However, I did realize that the amount that I was paying in mortgage for me to live in my quote unquote home was more expensive than if someone else lived in my home. So I needed to make a decision on who would live there in the future so that I could benefit financially. For you, maybe it means renting your home and moving to a smaller, less expensive place to live. Maybe it means selling your home altogether. Or like me, it meant selling my home, renting an apartment temporarily, and then moving to a less expensive real estate market and buying property there. Throughout this series, you're gonna hear me say, leave no money on the table and invest the gains. Keep this in mind as we continue to learn together. Stay tuned for the future videos to see how that actually worked out for me. Now back to minimalism. I became intentional about the things that I owned and that I acquired. Now I must say this started for me during the COVID-19 pandemic. Being forced to stay at home and distance myself from other people taught me what things were of true value. So here are some of the things. Being mentally and physically healthy. I became more physically active during that time. I began to eat healthier because I really just wanted to feel better. I spent less time eating out, well, because I couldn't. This allowed me to start saving a lot of money. And there's nothing like the feeling of seeing your accounts grow. I started taking long walks and longer bike rides. This was for my physical health but also my mental health. Even if I couldn't talk to people face to face, at least I can get out in the world and see people from a distance. Riding my bike through the neighborhood and waving at other people jogging by or walking their dogs on the sidewalk continued to keep me connected to humanity. So there was the physical benefit and the mental benefit. Eventually, the physical benefit was that I lost 25 pounds. Clothes and fashion was no longer important to me. Now, we all like to look nice, but if we're truly honest with ourselves, fashion and quote-unquote looking good is about the opinion of other people. If this weren't true, wearing a simple color-coordinated outfit from Target would be cool. It wouldn't be fashionable per se but functional. However, function would not be enough. Not even for me. This practical thinking made me face the realities of how much of my time and money I was investing in looking good for other people or fishing for compliments and validation. Maybe it was just me, but I don't think I'm alone here. I'll let you just sit with that. For years, I wanted to drive a luxury vehicle. In the exception of two cars, all of my vehicle choices had been pretty practical. My last vehicle purchase was a mix of performance and practicality. At the end of 2014, I wanted a new car. I wanted a nice car. I wanted a luxury performance machine. You guessed it, I wanted a BMW. It would be a Christmas gift to me. And it would be the most expensive vehicle that I had ever bought on my own. My max budget was $30,000. I was still trying to be practical a bit. Well, my search soon revealed to me that $30,000 would barely allow me to buy a stripped down version of a 3 Series BMW, not even a sunroof. Now, I couldn't buy a car without a sunroof, so I had to make some changes in what I desired. I looked at used BMWs. 
but still they were a little pricey for the newer used models. I looked at used Audis, Lexuses, Infinities, and beyond. At the time, I just couldn't wrap my mind around spending that kind of money for a used car. I wish I understood then what I know now. That cars immediately depreciate the moment that you buy them. But you live and you learn. Now I know there is no need to buy a brand new car. Anyway, I really like German vehicles and I've owned two of them in the past. So I did more research and I settled on a Volkswagen GTI. Actually, it wasn't settling. It was a great purchase because I really loved that car. German engineering, speed, style, and all of the bells and whistles. It even had a retractable sunroof. Okay, I know I'm geeking out on cars, but I'm a car geek. Here is where minimalism and intentional living come into play. I took great care of that car. And even though I still wanted a BMW, I drove that car until I moved abroad in 2021. Now, nine years may not sound like a really long time, but in our current climate, people are leasing cars for three or four years before quote unquote trading up to a more expensive, newer model. Unless you are leasing a vehicle for your business, you are actually just renting a car long term. Here's why. You gain no equity when you lease. The whole goal of leasing is to have a lower payment. You obviously couldn't afford the car in the first place, but that's another story. The trade-off is when you have to return the vehicle and walk away from it. Again, no equity. Or you have to pay a high residual value to keep the car after you've made all the lease payments. At that point, you more than likely have negative equity and a big balloon payment. Or you finance, again, the residual payment, which is a waste because if you purchased the car with a traditional loan, you would have paid less. This is the trickery of consumerism. Okay, back to what I did. The car I bought was not a BMW, but it was a valuable, reliable, and a desirable car. Again, I drove it for seven years, I kept it in great shape, and I didn't have to invest a lot of money into it. When I was ready to sell it in 2021, I sold it for half of its original value. So let's put this into perspective, and I'll give you a lesson in car finance at the same time. I bought the car for $28,000. I financed it through my credit unit at about 4%. Not too bad. When I went to the dealership to handle the paperwork, they, of course, wanted to earn the interest on the vehicle as well, so they offered me a lower rate at 2.9%. I gladly took their offer and I drove off with the car. When I returned to my credit union to inform them that I had taken the dealer's finance offer, they wanted to keep my business too. So they asked if I had already purchased the car and if I had it with me. I told them I did. Then they told me that they could quote unquote refinance my used car at 1.9%. My car was considered used because I had already purchased it and I financed it through someone else so they could finance it as a new used car. So it was a win, win, win situation. I ended up with a five year car loan with a payment of about $570 a month. In total, I paid around $35,000 at the end. I drove the car for another two years without a payment. If I was leasing a car, I would have been in my third year of a second lease term. I understood my car was not new. However, Volkswagen doesn't change their body styles often, 
So my car still looked new. And most people thought it was the newest model. So I drove my car without a $570 payment for two years. That saved me over $27,000. Guess how much I sold my car for when I sold it in 2021? $14,000. Now, I don't tell this story to brag by any means at all. I tell the story to share with you how minimalism can work for you if you want it to. No matter how you look at it, this level of minimalism not only saved me money in the long run, but it gave me a nice chunk of change to do what? Invest. Because I took that entire $14,000 and I invested it. All of this afforded me some positive gains and increases to be able to live my life abroad today and to enhance my income in retirement in the future. Remember what I said earlier, leave no money on the table and invest the gains. So are you ready to embrace minimalism and unlock the door to early retirement and your life abroad? Remember, minimalism is not about depriving yourself. It's about making room for what truly matters to you. Your future self will thank you for every unnecessary item that you let go and the new life that you're going to embrace. So start small, be patient with yourself, and keep your eyes on the prize. A life of freedom, adventure, and purpose awaits you. So let's redefine retirement together. Are you with me? Good. I hope this information was beneficial to you, and if it was, please give this video a like. You can subscribe to my channel to follow the Furlough to Freedom series. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll know when the next video drops. Hasta luego.